Hi, my name is Patricia Rollinson, and today I'm going to show you how to paint these wonderful songbirds. We've got our eastern bluebird, our goldfinch, our cardinal, and our blue jay. And what's really cool about them all is they were done using multi-part stencils. So we just use our overlays and we fill in each of the areas, and they're so simple. Now I took the painting up a little bit so that I went ahead, you could just use the stencil and you'd have a perfectly okay bird but I went ahead and used some more techniques to go ahead and make them just a little bit more advanced and to make them look like they're not stenciled at all. So I think you're going to have a lot of fun. I've used, uh, I show you how to use the um, Media Fluid Acrylics with your regular um, DecoArt craft paints. Um, the two of them are quite a great companion and, um, and then of course how to use the multi-layer stencils. I hope you enjoy. Okay, I've got some pretty magical bird stencils here. There are three parts. I'm going to go ahead and give my stencil a little tape. Just a teeny bit. And the way you're going to get nice clean lines on your stencils is you're going to take warm white. And I've got a dome stencil brush. So this is domed all the way around. And after you get using them, when you first get them, they're a little bit long. But after you wash them and beat them up a little bit, they kind of get shorter and shorter um, so that they end up being very short and tight and they're wonderful then they're great for dry rubbing but for stenciling they're good long and so what we do is we take a little bit of our paint and we kind of drag it out on our palette and then we come over here on our palette and we pounce on a paper on a paper towel and that's going to get any like stray stuff going underneath your stencil okay and so then I'm going to pounce towards the center instead of pouncing towards my edge and that's going to also help get a really clean line. So all the way around the edge I'll just rotate my brush and get that defined and then I can fill in the middle with no problem. So first is warm white. Okay then I'm going to take some white, snow white, which is going to be just brighter and I'm going to put that back on his wing. and it can kind of come out into his belly just a little bit. See how that's just kind of fading a little? It's harder to see on the camera, I'm sure. And it can actually kind of come under his chin just a little bit too. If you lose the hairs out of your bristles, just wipe them off. Okay. I neglect to mention how darn cheap these brushes are. They're super affordable, so and they do magic things. So I put up with hairs. Okay, so then we get that there. And then I'm gonna go into our gray sky with our warm white brush. I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a blow dryer before I do the next step. So just a little background story about me with birds. I have always been afraid to paint birds because there's so many details. The, the eye has to be in the right place. They have to look kind of quirky. They, it's just, it's not an easy thing. So I've always avoided it because I think it's hard. So I love that this stencil idea makes it so easy. So I'm going to go into gray. I'm going to not do it dirty and I'm going to do it with a crescent brush because this does just a little bit finer technique. And then what I want to do is give his belly that little bit of shading. And I'm going to use the stencil now as my mask. Okay, and just come right up the edge. repeat next to that edge. Just strengthen. There we go. Okay, and a really cool um, technique for cleaning out your crescent brushes, because we're just dry rubbing with them, is to take a little bit of rubbing um, hand sanitizer and just work your paint off and then they'll dry really quickly. It's kind of paper towel heavy, but at least then you don't have to own 85 brushes to paint straight through a project. Now 
think it's taking off the old paint as well. <clears throat> okay, we're going to base our head area with baby with uh, baby blue. tail area with baby blue. Hold down your stencils so that you get a nice clean line. The more open your stencil is, the better it is, but it makes it a little bit teeny floppier, but it makes it a better art moment. You can also, if you want a slightly fuzzier looking um, critter, you can just whisk instead of stippling and you'll get a little bit fuzzier look but it covers better so I can go in and just kind of whisk and it's removing just a little bit because I'm wet then we'll go into sapphire and we'll do the other areas and we could once again you can whisk that see how that's softer looking take our winter blue and we can just gently dry brush kind of radiating, radiating out okay and then we can take our um, sapphire blue and we can take and dry rub except for I am dry okay we're gonna dry rub from the crown up. And go ahead and dry rub a little bit the base of that tail. Okay, we're just setting the scene here. Okay, we take that away. And so now we have our blues established. Okay, so this is where we get into, um, we could do one of two things. If you're not comfortable with your hand skills, you can put the stencil back over, but I want to do a little bit of wash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this um, Media Fluid Acrylics, which is a pigmented paint. It's a paint that's highly pigmented with no fillers. That means it's not going to be cloudy and it's not going to base coat. It's just going to glaze. It's going to be awesome. So I just want to go in with like a float glaze with the cobalt teal. Then we're going to go on to his wing and his tail. So I could have that over the top, the, um, the stencil, or I can just do it manually. It's not hurting me to do it manually. And so this is going to allow the colors underneath to show through. And you can have some variations in there because the birds are never, you know, just pure. Okay, that's kind of pretty. Okay, we'll just get this area in the back. So we've got the blue undertone, the teal on top. Okay, then we're going to take um, Cerulean Blue and we're going to glaze right up next to our edge. And then we're going to walk that down a little bit wet and not enough paint. Okay, then we'll go on the front of the feathers. And I don't know if you can see. That's a microscopic dot of paint, and this just goes, and it's beautiful, and it's amazing, amazing stuff. It lasts. It's acrylic, so it's water-soluble. And you can mix it with your regular acrylic paints. So then we'll go on the front of the wing. get 
on our white, we can go back and fix it with some brush. Okay, and I think we'll give his tail a little bit of that treatment as well. See what we've ended up with is just like one color on this side, one color on this side, and when we put the black on top, it is just going to be magical. Maybe give a little kiss of maybe just a little bit on his brow. You can go back into your white and fix what you messed up. Okay, now we're going to take our phthalo blue and blot, and then we're going to walk this out. Okay, so I don't have a glaze gl uh, glare. Walk this in. I'm going to make it a mess of my white, which is perfectly fine. Okay, now he becomes that blue, blue bird. Go ahead and put it on his forehead as well. And notice that when I did it over here, where I didn't have a dark blue underneath like that, that it comes up almost like a blue-green or a teal, and when I did it over here, it increased the blue color. It's really a powerful little pigment here. And I think maybe we want to go ahead and do some of that down here. around. I'm using a curved flat brush and that's giving me some good corner control. This color is just simply gorgeous. So that gives us our blues established. Okay, now we're going to take the Media Carbon Black and we're going to wipe it on our paper towel so we don't get anything surprising. And this has really good coverage, which I don't understand because everything else is sheer, but this looks really good. Look at that's covered in one little scumble that I even wiped off. Okay, so you can do your edges. This is such a phenomenal way to paint a bird. <clears throat> okay, so you want to be careful that you're holding everything down for the markings so that you're accurate and sharp because the one thing they are is accurate and sharp. Don't want any bleed under, so make sure that you're pouncing off on the paper towel. Okay, and magically you have a marked and detailed bird. Isn't he wonderful? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards and we're going to do a couple of little techniques to refine him. So we're fantastic, we love our bird, blah blah blah. But now let's go ahead and refine and finish him up. Okay, so more than likely you could just stop here if you didn't want to do any more detailing. However, I'm going to continue.
So what I'd like to do now is deepen and make him just a little bit more elaborate. Okay, so I'm going to go and put my stencil back on, but this time it's going to be a mask and not a stencil. So it's just protecting my outer area. I'm going to make sure you get it to the, the edges. Okay, and I've got the um, Media Acrylic Dark Gray Value 3 and a Crescent Brush. I'm just going to wipe that off really strongly. Okay, and I want there to be a little bit more gray up here. And because these are so sheer, I don't have to worry about getting it on my blue because it's not going to base over my blue. I can go just a little bit around his eye. All right, and I'll take that off. And then we'll float. I'm going to get a little curved flat brush, not a curved flat, my little short bright brush. And we're going to float around his eye. We're going to use the black, the carbon black. Make a nice pretty little float. I'm going to float right around his eye with the floaty side facing out. And that's just going to fuzz everything like it looks in nature. Looking for a dry spot. I'm going to fuzz that. And fuzz down here. Then his eye is done. He's got a funny little eye, so we're going to give him just a teeny, we're going to float with white. White that is dry and not cool. And here's what we're going to do is we're just going to, I think I've got way, way too fat a float. I just need just that microscopic little edge of my brush. Float the eye, and then float the eye on top. Give it just a little bit kind of a eyeball-y kind of look. And then we'll just take our brush tip and give him his little looker. Okay, we're going to go into um, Sapphire plus white. Really wipe that off and we're going to give him just that highlight. I might have to repeat my um, black step, but that's okay. I'm just going to give him a highlight underneath his neck. It goes back to the back. And a little bit more white. This is where I could pull my stencil back out and use it as a mask if I needed to. And I might do some of that on his head as well. I had started with that darker up here, but I think I think I like the idea of it a little bit lighter. And then maybe moving into white. Some streaks. Okay, and that would be where I would, to get right up next to the edge, you could just put your mask right back on there. Okay. And, let's see. Okay, we're just going to put just a little touch of the blue, the sapphire blue and the white, right over the bridge of his nose. And, I put my mask back on there. So I don't bugger up the background. Mm. 
Okay, so that just gives the space just a little bit more um, dimension. Okay, we're gonna shoot in there with just a little baby blue and give him just a little separation on his beak. Maybe we could give him just a little highlight. Not, not so much, a little uh, white plus baby blue. And his little toes. And I think I want one more stage of dark on the belly. Figure out where I'm at. Get me lined up. And we'll just go in to the middle value gray. so much it may glaze. Yum. Well, that's fun. Okay, let's take a peek. Okay, so it got just a little bit weird there. So let's go ahead and float the really sheer gray. Next to my edge, cinch everybody together. Okay. All right, we're going to go into the cerulean blue and rub that off, and then just tuck just ever so much blue coming into his white. And give it just that ever little bit of glaze. Okay, we're going to base our little bird with white. We're going to make sure to pounce in from the edges. So that we get a nice clean line. And have that stipply, stencily look. And we'll fill it in, we'll dry in between and do a second coat. We're going to dry rub with some gray sky on his belly and under his little tail. Okay, we're going to go into a little gray sky in the thalo blue mix it together and we'll give him just a little hint of that. Okay, we're going to base his blue area with slate gray. That's kind of his under colors. And we'll go on top with some pretty blue. It's easier to put blue over gray than it is to put gray over blue. And it's also better to do nice thin coats with your stencil than it is to do thick coats because thick coats almost always kind of booger up. So thin coats work and then you can easily quickly go back over and give it a second little pop. I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to take my slate gray and my white mix and I'm just going to kind of brush it back, leaving it to be just a little bit whispery, wispy. Let's see if I can get some of that texture. Just a hair. There we go. Make sure you're lined up or it won't look pretty. Okay, now we'll go into true blue and white. 
And let's get him tinted. So he's way more tinted here. And he's got gray going down his back and then his wing is way more down onto his tail, which is really way more. All right, so now we can go into just a little bit of our phthalo blue. And blot, always blot. Yeah, I'm not comfortable floating through a stencil because I feel like I will mess it all up. Want that right up to the edge, edge. color. Notice how little you have to fight with these colors to get them to blend. pretty. And then you could cut in just a couple. You could cut in a couple of the tail feathers. And that just gives them just a little bit more detail in line. Okay, we're going to take toffee, and it's going to take a little bit more toffee to cover that blue up. I'll work on that, make a second coat. And just kind of streaky, tousledy looking toffee, except for where I messed up my blue. Okay, we're going to do a dry rub of the media fluid in raw sienna. Okay, and so we're just going to kind of come down and just glaze. And because these are pure and they don't have fillers, and we don't have to worry about it covering up everything that I did on the previous step. And so my rough my rough stuff is going to still look rough. Then we're going to follow it with just a dirty brush of the quinacridone, which is just a fun word to master. fading as you get down to the bottom. And we'll take a little peek. He's getting cute. Okay, and then this one in this case, I think is one of the ones where we need to break we need to break the edge just a little bit. So I'm going to go a little mix of both of these. I'm going to bust that edge up just a little teeny bit. I'm going to get a different brush. Let's go. Oh, that's too much. I'll try dry brushing. We want just a little bit more paint than a dry rub. Just 
drag that puppy down there. And I'll flip it over and flip forward. His little body with some brush strokes, maybe a little touch more of the quinacridone. <clears throat> Pardon me. breaking it just nicely. Okay, we're going to give just a little bit of white detailing to his wing and over the top of the red. And then we'll give just a little bit of white on those detailed leaves. Leaves? Huh, wings. Sorry. And that gives him just a little bit more bird feather. And then we can break the line going up into his breast feathers with a little bit of white as well and that will just fuzz him out and missing a brush and then I'm going to glaze his chest deeper I almost want to go into something brown and that's red and let's see about a little burnt umber and quinacridone gold let's see what we get with that color mixed one and one Deepen him up. Maybe just a little bit more brown. Okay, this brown color is gorgeous. take just a little bit of that color and just kind of streak it in through the blue just a teeny bit. You can even give him a little wing down there. To the bottom of his tail, he's got a little bit of muddy color. So I, what I'm doing is I'm scribbling with the tip of my brush and then I'm washing it with the other side of my brush. Okay, his final step with the stencils is to go ahead and do his beak. his beat. Okay. And now he'll look like a little birdie. Oops. All right, we're going to take a little bit of our black and our dark gray three and mix them. And then we're going to make his little little eye thing. It kind of goes back off his head just a little bit. And just 
just a little bit around his eye. Then he has a little eye ring that is going to be Salem Blue. Okay, so I'm going to blot my Salem Blue and then I'm going to just do kind of like a series of touching little squibbles. Don't want perfection. It's kind of wider in the front and the back than it is on the middle. And then we'll go in and give him a very faded washed eye. Blot some white. Okay, and then his beak gets a little, little dash of something too. We'll go Salem Blue on that as well. And we'll use our stencil as our mask. So don't make a bloody mess. Ooh, hi. Wipe it off. Yeah, that's cute. Cute, cute, cute. I think his feet need a little something too, so I'll go ahead and give his feet a little shape following. Little It's amazing how much they change when you add that little, those little bit of details. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of Salem Blue underneath his little beaky. Kind of coming off onto his fur. I guess he doesn't have fur, he has feathers. And we'll give him just a little bit of feathery texture. Okay, and we're going to add his forehead now. Let's give him just a little bit. We don't want to make him be like a bad hairdo day. Just a couple of little feathery poos coming off his head. Okay. I think we can call well yeah, can we? Nope. I'm gonna add just a little bit of the Salem blue to his belly. And under his tail. Okay, we're going to base our cardinal with coral blush. Tip our brush away from the edge so that we get a nice clean line. Wipe off some on your paper towel. And you'll repeat a couple times for coverage. Okay, so we're going to take our um, pyrrole or pyrrole red, I'm not sure how you say it, and we're going to dry rub with it out just a little bit and we're gonna leave his um, I'm gonna redden him up towards the inside on his belly and leave some light in the middle there. Move some of that light on the tail. I'm going to come down to his shoulders. We'll see what we get there. And then I'll wait until I put the next step on. But in the meantime, 
that's not going to be red enough for me. So what we need to do is <clears throat> glaze. I can find my paintbrush. Glaze these edges. And then that'll sink that in really nicely. And this might be where we bring out a mop. And that's how you can get that really nice blended look. They'll stop right there. Always mop from the clean edge in. Okay, he's gonna have some stuff going on on his feathers, but I want to get my markings on there first. And you could take a little bit of that and you can streak in some kind of tails that feathers that stay there. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of scratchy neutral gray. And I think what I want to do is do the tips with the neutral gray. Do the feathers. And then I think I'll go in with a little bit of this pyrrole red. And bring that down to where the feathers are. Maybe, ooh, that's neat. I'll just go over the whole thing. And then that gray will be underneath. Ooh, that's just a cool technique. And it tints it. It's one of those happy accident kind of moments going on right here. Okay, I think we can go into a little bit of black <clears throat> if I can find it. I have it. We'll mix the black with a little bit of the gray. And then we can just deepen just the tippy tips. And do over the feet just a little bit. Once again with our pyro red. Okay, let's take that away. Cool, cool, cool. And now we have to diffuse all of our little lines, so we'll go into the pyro red and just diffuse away. So we'll diffuse that line and bring that up. And 
and I could probably go back to my base and give him just not quite so much pink. Use him as a mask. Okay, and then we'll take our dark gray mix, which will be the black plus, oops, high. My brush is a disaster. I've got water everywhere. And we'll float right under that back feather. go just a little bit more just black and we'll bring in some tail feathers here Okay, I'm going to add some of the little speckly um, gray feathers. So I just want to take a really small dry, too dry, um, dry little crescent, oops, and wiggle. Tape both sides of your stencils where you'll get the wigglies. And let's just make a series of little dots. Not quite everywhere. Let's take a peek. And you know what we could do? Is we could have fun and we could take our little short bright go into the same mix, which is the white and the neutral gray, and give them just a little teeny sea stroke for reality. A couple down here. And we can give him some a little bit of gray in his leading Okay, I can dig that. Okay, and take our black it off and go pretty hardcore right next to his face but then let's go ahead and feather out I'm gonna need another brush I'm using the Patty's favorite dry brush to get the wispy stuff going and so I'll wispy right next to the edge rotating. And take a peek and see what that looks like. Doesn't look like anything, so I'll do a little bit more. I'm mixing the brush with water. And then that line. And I don't like that very much. So let's fix him. 
by bringing in some of the red. Okay, and I think this is going to be one of those things that I just need a really fine liner for. And so I'm going to take the black, thin my paint, and then what I'm going to do is just get a lot of thin liner. A lot. Just going to fill that in just a little bit more. Okay, and if you'll take your mask and just bring it out to where you did your little lines and you can grow it out there just a little bit and it'll kind of diffuse things. So that gives me just a little bit of fuzzies without, um, without too, much, too much craziness. Okay, now we're going to put a beak right in the middle of his face. I'm putting the steps of the last one and the one before together since they're so quick. So we're just going to glaze his beak with quinacridone gold. I think I want his feet glazed a little bit too. So I'll go back to the feet stage. Is that. All right, we're going to give him a little eye ring with some gray and the pyrrole red. And just do a little tap, 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 tap. Okay, and there's a little eye. poke into a little bit of white and a little bit of white plus the gray maybe. Give him a little highlight on his little eye ring. And bring his little beak line in. And now suddenly she's pretty and she's cute. A little girly girl. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take our warm white and we're going to base our goldfinch. I'm going to press off on our paper towel. And I know I'm repeating for those of you watching all of these, but I'd rather say it enough times because it's important. Oops, and tape is also your friend. So definitely tape in two spots. So you don't shift. Okay, so we're going to go into our neutral gray and we're going to dry rub at the back of the bird and a little bit on his back. And that is that. Okay, so we're going to do Hansa Yellow Light dry rubbing in the middle of our little bird. I want to have just a little bit of form and roundness. And then we'll go into Hansa Yellow Dark or Medium. And we'll do the edges so it'll be much stronger.
Okay, and I'm going to attempt shading on the yellow with a mix of the titanium white and the dark gray value number three. I'm going to increase the gray a little bit, about half and half. Now I'm boosting. Oops, my fingers are dirty. Okay, I'm going to get just a little bit out here. And if you get a little bloob like that, then you just use your base coat color and take care of it. <clears throat> okay, just bring that in. He's a very, 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 very yellow bird, but I think that we can have just a little teeny bit of shading and then glaze it with the yellow. I'm hoping that'll work like it did with the red. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use the dark value number three and give him some shading. There's chin. belly. What I love about these paints is they're sheer so I can go over this gray and it's going to pick up underneath. And I'm wondering if we want just a little bit on his head. Okay, next we're going to use the Hansa Yellow Medium, and we're going to glaze a little birdie. So I'm going to glaze next to the edge, and then I'm going to go on to my stencil as a mask. I may not need to go onto my stencil as a mask. Okay, that's bright bird. Okay, we'll go into yellow oxide. Is it yellow? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yellow oxide. And we'll just brown up our shade. Oops, not too far in. nice form and shape. Okay, we're going to take our black and we'll make all of the details black. Okay, we're going to use a little bit of winter blue and we're just going to scumble across the top of his head. And maybe just a little bit on his wing down here. We'll go in with winter, uh, not winter, natural bluff. And we'll just do his feet. Okay, we're going to take raw sienna and we'll just glaze his nose. And then we'll glaze his little feet as well. Just kind of do this, kind of run down his leg. He's got like a couple colors. Just 
feet gets a little bit back here. And then we've got a little bit of burnt sienna. <clears throat> And that's just going to kind of come out here. And we'll make him glaze just a little bit more. Sienna down here. Okay, we're going to do his little eye ring with. Got the color out, but I don't have the bottle out. Yellow oxide, yellow ochre, yellow ochre. And we're just going to. Just going to dot. They can see. Somebody needs better glasses. Dot around there. And then we'll go into a little gray and white. And then we'll finish the dotting on the top. And then we'll give him a little washed out eyeball. Clever, clever. Okay, we'll get a little bit of the dark gray and we'll go right on the top of his beak. <clears throat> 